Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. So my man right here tells me this podcast today is going to be a little bit different than the ones we had in the past. Yeah. So if you're ready to change your life, you want to watch this full episode, it's going to be kick-ass. Got a monster inside of me. You better watch out if you ignite He's a road ahead of full prophecy to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day. Guys, you ready for the One Percent Podcast? I'm going to let my man start it. Let's get it. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am super excited to be here today with the one and only Andy Elliott. Hey, if you watch a lot of Andy's podcasts, I'm going to tell you right now, this one's going to be a little bit different. We're going to get into a little bit, of, a little bit of stuff that maybe doesn't get talked about as much. I just want it to be super interesting. There's things, there's questions that I have for Andy. Uh, I can't wait to to find out. But also, we're going to talk a little bit about my story, what I've been up to, kind of where we started, where we're at now, the things that we're getting ready to to get into, and the things that we're really excited about. So. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, I want to say something real quick just because I didn't introduce him, but I want to tell you guys something real quick. He owns a company called MoveBees. He owns a couple moving companies, but he owns a call center that's called MoveBees. That's right. They're a multi, multi uh, million dollar company. But the cool thing is, is they take moving companies and they and they basically take over the, all the calls that come in. Now, they can do as much as you want them to do, but they're crushing it. They can take a company, a moving company, and literally 5X to production just like that. Mm. They're killing it. They're crushing it. Um, not only does he own moving companies himself, so like, you know, he's not a theory teacher. Like, in theory, this should work. Like, he's right. an applicant teacher. He owns the companies. He's doing it. And he's built this call center. And then... They're just crushing it with everybody that uses them. And there's a lot of companies that are using them. So as he talks, um, if you have a moving company and you're like, dude, you know, we want to 5X our stuff, um, I'll give you a number in a little bit, or there's a description below, and it'll have his cell phone number. You can just shoot him a text message and connect with him. Um, but let's get started. So I highly respect this guy. He's 45 years old, great shape, married, two kids, crushing it, killing it. Uh, he was formerly in the car business before. You guys know I come from a car business background. So the dude's ultra thick skin, super strong Christian. But he's a savage man, and he's growing every day, and he's on a self-development journey. There's That's no right. limits, and he's hungry and ready for war. So right. let's do this. All right. Awesome, man. All right. What do you want to talk about? All right. So uh, should we should we talk about me first? Or, yeah, I think or... you should talk about you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. And then we'll go into some questions with me and you. Yeah. So a uh, little bit about me is um, I started a moving company in 2005. Uh, I now own three moving companies. And really to service my three moving companies, I created a centralized call center, right? Mm -hmm. And then we, we wanted to monetize that. That was always the idea is like, hey, once we get this dialed in and uh, we're really controlling the, the, you know, the sales environment, we've got a layer of management, we've got a great culture, then we want to start offering this to other companies, right? And so that, that's what we did. And really just by like word of mouth, just started putting it out there. Hey, you know, w we could sell for your company if you like. You can uh, send us your phones, any, anything that uh, you guys don't get. You know, we could be overflow. We could be your complete sales solution. We'll also work in your CRM. We'll take, you know, any leads that come in and respond to those. We, we have a process. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing really that, that I found f with selling cars. Um, you know, when I first started selling cars, like I walked in, I was a pretty decent salesperson, right? Mm -hmm. But then they showed me, you know, a process and showed me like, this is why you do what you do when you do it and, and how to control the sale and to walk the customer through the sale, right? So a lot of the stuff that I took from uh, selling cars, things that I learned from mm -hmm. selling cars were things that I applied when I left selling cars to go. And, you know, I told you earlier when we were, when we, uh, were just kind of chatting or whatever that when I left selling cars, my, my thing was, is like, I'm going to go see every house. Cause I was still in sales at then my company is just small at this time. I'm going to go see every house that will let me come. I'm going to, I'm going to go meet the people. I'm going to meet their kids. I'm going to pet their dog and I'm going to put them into a sales process. And then I'm going to ask for the business before I leave their house. I'm not going to like go home and send them the mm -hmm. quote, like later that night or the next day yep. with like a follow-up call. I'm going to, I'm going to get them while the warm and fuzzies are, are still happening. Yep. And that is still our process with the call center. Center, right when a customer calls in like we don't say what do you have tell me what you have tell me what you're moving because right away you're giving over control right to, mm -hmm. to the customer where it really should be a situation where it's like I tell you what I want you to go to the master bedroom for me and I want you to tell me all the large pieces of furniture in the master bedroom and then you guide them to the next bedroom and the next bedroom and you guide them through the whole sale like that and you build so so much more like trust and equity uh, with the people by the time you get to the end of that and you know what you're talking about and you, you sound great when you ask for the sale you're 
your potential of closing them is so much higher. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And the, and the biggest thing really that we're trying to do is we want to close on the spot as much as possible, whether it's an inside sale or an outside sale, because the best part about that is, is you don't have to do any follow-up now, and you're creating more capacity uh, to be able to sell more for the company. Yeah, and this is important, guys. This company makes tens of millions of dollars a year, and I want you to remember this, okay? Everybody, all that matters is mastery. Whatever you do, it's creating mastery. When you're in the automotive industry, you were the best in your store at what you did. It when was. you and your wife decided to start this company and your kids and you're like, I'm gonna go all in on this thing, um, you've created mastery in the moving space. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of moving companies that have been in business for a very long time that can't get past a million a year. Yeah. We see it all the time. Yeah. And then you know you 10X that and you continue to keep going. Um, tell me about, cause, cause, and, I, and by the way, like I, I love, you talked about, um, graduations in school. You said you didn't graduate high school, right? No. Yeah. I, I want to tell you this, you know, one of my best friends, Brad Lee, you know, he didn't graduate high school. You know, he quit high school at 16 years old. And I want to tell you guys something, you know, it's so crazy how, and you know, me and you are the same age, but that how we, anybody can self develop in life and what they're not good at or what they didn't know to do. You can learn. And now we're in a time right 100%. now where if you are a moving company and you're watching this and you're making, you know, a half a million a year, a million a year, a million and a half, why not 10 million? That little process you're talking about, the way that you guys have have mastered the phones yeah. and setting it up, it's literally a plug and play system and it, and it prints cash in a moving company, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Yeah. And by by the way, it did it in your own and now you're doing it for, you know, fifty other companies as you're just starting to expand it's out. It's been our secret sauce is we're good at we're good at marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So we create a lot of leads, but we're really good at sales. Yeah. And that's why my companies have done so well. And I, I know that it. I could go into any moving company and do what I've done in my moving companies mm -hmm. and get and get the same results. Yeah. I yeah. love it, man. So, and that's the thing that our our, our industry that's what they, they suck at. Mm -hmm. They've got operational people answering the phones like movers when you move in, you know. And instead of somebody that sounds really good and understands the the art of the sale. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of amateurs in the space. There are, and not yeah. not just. And by the way, I'm not just knocking moving companies here. I mean, like in general, around the world, there's a lot of uh, lack of I give a shit. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, people go in, they get a job. Yeah. And they just don't care a lot. So as yeah. you guys take this part, it really allows the company to have a lot less stress. Absolutely, right? and to just focus and, and on, money yeah, on what just they focus do on running their company, focus on capacity, mm -hmm. like systems, processes, training their movers, like mm -hmm. all the back end stuff that is so important to to offer a great service. Yeah, so you well, get repeat and referrals. Well, pretty much with plugging you guys into any moving company, mm -hmm. they literally just need to buy more trucks. And have more movers. Yeah, be be ready to to hire and train and buy, buy trucks, more trucks, basically. have more movers, and yeah. make more money. Yeah, I mean that's it, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, because there's not a shortage of people that don't want to move. Yep. And on on top of that, like one of the biggest things too is like anybody who's working with us, who's working with movies, movies, you become part of our family. Mm -hmm. Like I I'm on the phone all the time with owners. Like I just give them my time. I'll tell you anything that I know about this industry, anything that has worked for me, any way that we can help and consult. Like we're we're gonna help you scale. We're gonna find out the thing that is holding you back. Yeah, so if anybody right now, I'm going to give out this number here, but and we'll put it on the screen, but if you own a moving company or you work for a moving company or you know someone that has one, send them this video. I'm going to give you his personal cell phone. You guys can text us. It's 330-752-8999. That's 330-752-8999. And just text them, hey, I want to get some information um, on your on your centralized uh, call center, right? Yep, Just, yep. Uh, you want to get some help, and then they'll reach out to you, and there we go. Um, I want to talk to you for a minute. So talk to me about, because I like to know, look, okay, so your, your business is killing it. Business is great. You're obviously a grinder. You've built it. Um, you know, you've been through a lot of ups and downs in life, lot, right? Yeah. So you're a you're not afraid of failure. You're, you love hunting, um, but also you're a really good person. Your heart is good. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about 
let's talk about like what you do with ministry and stuff. Cause it seemed yeah. like half of our conversation had a lot to do with that. So I know you're really passionate about that. Yeah, I am. So, um, I, I became a Christian a little bit later in life. So I trusted Jesus when I was like 27 years old. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those situations. I mean, you, you've heard this story though, but I was, I was in a, in a, a small church. My mother-in-law and father-in-law invited us to, to come to this church uh, for like a Christmas Eve service, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm a musician. I don't think I told you that. So I'm a drummer. I've been. I played. It, grew up like playing in a lot of bands. I mean, dude, when I dropped out of high school, mm-hmm. I was like, I ain't got time for school. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna be the next Tommy Lee, right? Yeah. That, that's what I, th- I thought I was gonna do. So, anyways, I'm in this service, and it's a small church, like 60 people. Mother and father-in-law invited us. The whole time I'm sitting in this service, I'm like, oh, the father-in-law told the pastor all about me. Because everything that, that the pastor was preaching about, everything that he was saying was like, it was like, dude, it was my heart. And it was going, what was happening to me in my life, right? Hey guys, we'll get back to the video in a sec. If you're watching this video because you want to level up in life and business, then one thing you got to do is optimize your sleep. One in three people worldwide reported not getting enough good sleep every night. A big part of the why? Mouth breathing. Luckily for you, our sponsor, Hostage Tape, is your best friend when it comes to sleeping. If you're like me, you've probably also struggled with everything from insomnia, dry mouth, restlessness, snoring, headaches, sore throat, and even waking up with mental fog and grogginess because of mouth breathing by sleeping and didn't even know it. Poor sleep affects essentially every area of your health, wealth, and happiness. With Hostage Tape, You simply peel off a piece of breathable fabric, place it over your mouth before bed, and voila! Several hours later, you wake up feeling refreshed and energized. If you're ready to feel focused, clear-minded, and energized, go to HostageTape.com and use code PASSION for 20% off your order today. Thanks to Hostage Tape for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the show. And towards the end, I was like, I realized, like, no, my pastor didn't tell this preacher all about me. God is speaking through that preacher to me mm-hmm. right now. And and there was an invitation at the end, like where I, you know, I trusted Jesus, gave my life to him, completely, completely changed me. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I knew in the car ride home that day that I was different, right? Mm-hmm. And and I haven't been the same. Dude, I had like a, I had a major alcohol problem, like recreational drug problem, mm-hmm. like all this stuff. And God cleaned me up and he took all that all that stuff away from me. Uh, you know, don't struggle with any of that stuff anymore. So but anyways, crazy. one of the things that I really wanted to get into, I mean, like that's well, kind of my... You, well, I want to say something. As you yeah. say that, anybody watching this, if, if, if you truly want to know the foundation of my life, it is God. Amen. If you want to know what he's saying and uh you know every time you tell the story of like the first time you raised your hand yeah it's like no you guys will know if you've done it but if you haven't here's what i would tell you once you realize and it's like it's the craziest thing that like god's been there with you the whole time it's just i hadn't been there yeah i've been lost i was lost right and he's trying to herd me up my whole life and uh, i was about 30 years old and okay. I remember me and my wife, you said you, you went to church. I had to go. I was a little bit more stubborn than you. I went 10 times straight. And at the end of the service, you would say, raise your hand if you're ready to give your life to God right now. Just, you know, raise your hand, meet me eye to eye. And I remember that I was just like, like, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, but I knew something was going to happen. Because every time, it's funny when you said, that you thought your father-in-law had told him everything about you because yeah. he was talking to you. Yeah. That was the best way to put it. And I never thought about that, but like, that's the way that I felt like, how does this guy know everything that I'm going through? Cause right. things that my wife didn't know I was going through, I was going through and he was talking about. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this is crazy, man. And I wanted to raise my hand, but then Every time I almost got close, I felt like I was going to start bawling mm. or crying. And I hadn't cried since my grandpa died. Yeah. Like, so like something was happening, you know what I'm saying? And it was like the old, I didn't, you know, I always say in order to get to your new life, you have to, you have to give up your old one. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, I wasn't for sure I wanted to give up this old horrible person. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But I remember we were, my wife was pregnant with uh, our son and it was our, it was our first kid. You know, I remember thinking, dude, I'm like. I'm not going to have a broken family. I'm mm-hmm. not going to be a piece of shit. That's right. I'm not going to be a bad dad. That's right. And I was like, dude, I don't like me. And yeah. I remember that morning going to church. I was like, God, if this is right, just today's the day. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And remember, you know, there's one week in between each time we go. And the craziest thing is, uh, you know, at the end he was like, you know, raise your hand, meet me eye to eye. I remember that day, right when he said, meet me eye to eye, literally my wife put her hand on my hand and I was like, oh, now I, I can't raise my hand because she has it. <laughs> and I remember pulling my hand out from underneath and raising my hand. Yeah. And I remember my wife, as I started crying, she started crying and she uh -huh. put her hands on me. And I remember just remember. thinking like, she, she was waiting for me to, to mm. be who I was supposed to be. Yeah. You know, she married me when I was lost, you know? Yeah. And that day when I left, all the old me was gone. It was like, so I always tell people, if you want to get a new life, you got to create a new identity. And once I found my identity in God, like, it was like, dude, I was like, I was ready to take over the world. So let me, let me ask you, uh, what, how has that changed you? How has that changed Andy Elliott from that day? Well, well, everything. I've had lots of different forms of me, okay. right? Um, yeah. You know, obviously, look, we are in the world, right. and the world's made of sin. So you, you, everybody needs to know that. Sin is fun, okay? It's sin is fun. If you yeah. go do something wrong right yeah. now— There's hey, pleasure in sin hey, for a season. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, no, it's, it's bad to sin, but but sin is fun, sure. okay? But not, and that's why people do it. It's just, it's just there's consequences, to sin okay it's fun now but then 10 minutes later you realize that is not good and i just ruined someone's life or yeah. i just ruined my life yeah. or i did something really bad and by the way if you don't think sin is fun then you're not sinning right yeah. okay because it can be fun you know my 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 preacher my pastor craig rochelle which we were talking about him i was from oklahoma so he was our local preacher oh, awesome. in oklahoma right yeah me and my wife started watching him 17 years ago when he was getting out of his garage Right. He was from his garage, went to preaching on Second Street. And then we were watching him when he only had one location before the Universe Bible app and all this stuff when he was just small. And he used to tell people, he's like, dude, listen, I remember I would fight people. OK, I would get drunk. I was the worst of the worst. And I didn't like who I was. Yeah. And I could respect that he was not a perfect person, but then he gave his life to God and then he became this really good man. Yeah. And that right there gave me hope. Like, man, I, I know this guy knows where I'm at. Yeah. Like, I know he knows. So, like, you say, like, how has that changed me? Um, well, number one, dude, my heart totally changed. I remember, like, you know, cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind, cleanse my soul. Like, it felt like I had a, was a wash rag that just got ringed out mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. And that just means I forgave. I, well, he forgave me in my old life. But honestly, at the same time, I kind of forgave me. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't walk around in shame anymore. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really care. So I just restarted my life. I started being really good to my wife, really good to people I ran into. I started making all these uh, bracelets, thousands of dollars I'd spend a month in these bracelets that say prayer changes things. God gave me a second chance and I'd put them in all the gas stations. Oh, wow. And so we had all around town, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 of these bracelets running around. I'd put them in gas stations every morning. I'd put them there. I became this person that literally I would learn, I would memorize the Bible every morning because I would want to go to work. And like I, how I motivationally speech people now, like or talk to them, I would be preaching the sermon out to people out on the lot and they hated me. <laughs> and by the way, I went four years without cussing. I really didn't cuss at all. And my goal was to become a preacher. I told my wife I want to become a preacher. Yeah. Um, and I was like, babe, I'm going to be on the pulpit. I'm going to be saving people's lives. Just like that preacher called me out. And I love what he said to me. He goes, listen to me. Some of you today, I'm going to tell you the truth and you're not going to like it. And you're going to walk out on me mm -hmm. because you didn't come to hear the truth. You came to make me make you feel good. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to save your life and make you the man or the woman your family's waiting on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, I hate the way this guy's hit me in the mouth because I wanted to walk out on him. I didn't like the way he was talking to me either. Yeah. But, he, but that's why I think I'm kind of direct to people now yeah. because I got my life changed in directness. My wife changed my life in directness. Yeah. But, but the deal is, is that um, w once I decided I wanted to be a preacher, my wife was like, okay, cool. I told her, I was like, I don't care about money no more. I don't care about anything. Like, I, but I learned something. I want you to know something. Some, some people are made to serve. I want to serve. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll wash your feet. I'll, I'll serve you. I'll do anything for you. But also I believe I was always really good at sales and I, I, I'm, I give away a lot of money. So in our church, Craig Rochelle that year, 2012, um, we, we got invited, um, Craig said, Hey, we want you to come to this, uh, 
uh, this uh, dinner with like 10 people out of the church. And there was like, I don't know, you got a couple hundred thousand people. Yeah. And where there's only 10 of us. And we sat down and Craig's like, and me and my wife, like, why are we here? Like, why do we get invited here? Yeah. And they're like, well, you're one of the top givers at our church. Like, so we gave more than I guess a, a lot of people did. Yeah. And I didn't give, my wife gives. Mm -hmm. And so I've got my wife over here stroking these big ass checks. And I have no idea that she's doing them, but I'm just always telling her, I'm like, babe, just give as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Cause everything to me was like, I need to get closer to God. I want to help more people. Yeah. I know the church, whatever they did with the money. I don't even care. Yeah. I don't need, I'm not even worried about it. I just, no. I, I, I know what I would do with it. Stupid stuff. Yeah. <laughs> give it to these people, right? <laughs> give it to these people and let them go. Look, we've got a house, we've got cars. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. You know, but, but really I was like, I tell my wife, I was like, I want to, I want to make, I want to make good money. I want to help more. So go into that deal where they said that you helped us build this. You helped us build this. I was like, dude, I was like, I need to make money. Mm. That's when I realized I'm, I'm like, dude, like I don't have to give by like holding the door at the church. No, I can be, I don't have to give by like being the preacher on the stage. Right. I'm like, I can just be an example. I can be in sales and that's be right. a good example that's to right. other people. And that's why I want to tell you guys right now, like, like being close to God, like just be a good example. Um, you don't have to be perfect. You're in a world full of sin. You're going to make mistakes. As long as you examine your heart and make sure you have a good heart. And as long as you love people and you're full of love, dude, listen, like I love to be intense. Um, I, I believe that people get changed when something gets really intense on them. Yeah. So that's why I believe like when I'm talking to people, I get like total immersion. I'm like in on them. I'm like trying to change them right then so that they don't go another year um, staying the same or struggling yep. or being yep. that way. So, yep. so anyways, but I just want to tell you that I, me and my wife decided uh, number one, to create our own ministry in our life on just being the example yep. on being good examples for other people. Um, obviously being super faithful to each other, being good parents, being close to God, not being perfect. We're not Pharisees. We're not, we're not like, Oh, look at us. We're perfect. And then one day you're going to find out. That's what's awesome about you though. Yeah. That yeah. like we did you're some stupid stuff. I'm like, dude, real. I'll do my stupid stuff in the light. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm human just like you, yeah. but I would never hurt you. I would never, you know, betray you. I would, you know, I hate, you know, how I feel about loyalty, yeah. you know, like I'm like, dude, like we're in a world full of people right now that we need more examples. Yeah. And I believe that that is a ministry to be an example of what like, um, it's so crazy. I always like disciples shit, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's like the brotherhood yeah. is what I call it. Like I call everything the brotherhood guy or girl. Yeah. It's like, this is our discipleship. This is our brotherhood. Yeah. We're raising human excellence just to change other people. But I try to do that by, by bringing that with, with God, just by being a good person. Mm -hmm. But, but dude, it's like, it's like, you know, I think it's apostle Paul says, I know what to do, but I don't do what I know. Yeah. Right. It's like, I, I know what, I what to do, <laughs> yeah. but I, you know, and I freaking hate it that I don't do that. But it's like, it's like, that's the way the world is. Right. Yeah. So that's why every day I think like who you're around, you know, you said you wake up every morning, you spend time with God. Yeah. Um, I feel like you'll find time for all the things that are important to you. People will say, yeah, well, I don't have time. No, dude, you have time for whatever you'll make time for. That's right. Yeah. Like it sucks when people, my wife tells me like, whatever's important to you, we'll find time for if last week we were too busy to do this that wasn't important last week yeah, yeah. because you would have found time for it yeah you know i love the gym i find an hour to go every day no matter what rain sleet snow whatever the hell's going on i always find my way to the oh, gym yeah. yep so she's always like you find your way to what you want yeah okay yep. um so anyways i was just saying that i think truly like giving my life to god was and is still the greatest thing that so ever happened you know, I mentioned to you uh, earlier today, I asked you if you ever heard the term, you know, redemptive business, right? Yeah, because said, like, no, I'm, yeah. I'm viewing you from afar, like this guy has a ministry, like it's, it's lights out. It's, it's out of this world, but uh, you know, a, re a redemptive business is changing the lives of the people who work for you, right? Mm -hmm. You're changing the lives of your clients and you're giving back to your community. Right. So you're making you're making a huge difference now. And I just want to mention, like for for the skeptics out there, you know, that's one of the reasons I want to have this conversation is because um, I, I really I'm a believer. And I think I think you're making uh, a, you know, a huge, a huge impact. Um, 
But God wants to use, you know, he calls them like his peculiar people, right? He wants mm-hmm. to use uh, people who can reach people that other people can't reach, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes I think maybe you get skeptics from maybe some of the language that, that, you're, that you use, like when you're speaking and things sure. like that. Uh, but, you know, I used to sell cars as well. I was in that culture for a long time. And I know what it takes to reach those types of people, right? Like I can relate to it. Mm-hmm. And they're not, they're not going to respond as well to somebody who is, you know, I, I guess like vanilla or something like mm-hmm. that. So would you mind just talking a little bit about like your, I feel that you're intentional when, when you use strong language. Yeah. So, yeah. um, number one, I want to talk about the masses yeah, for a okay. minute. If we yeah. were to talk, if we were to put a, a world map of all the people and we were to put how many of them are lost, the masses would be pretty big. Yeah, they would. Um, so when I'm speaking a lot of the time, I'm not speaking to the righteous. They said, God didn't come for the righteous. He came for the lost. He came mm-hmm. for the sick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the healthy people don't need a doctor. Right. That's so right. the sick people, I can relay a message yeah. to sick people. And I remember the, the, cause I'm sick. Right. But I don't want to be, <laughs> I want to be a good person. That's right. But so when I see people, I, you know, we're so good at reading people through negotiations. I can tell when people don't believe in themselves. Yeah. I can tell when people are scared. I can tell when people are living in fear. I can tell whenever people aren't believing in themselves. They're not who they, they want to become. I can tell when people are procrastinating and I just try to snap people out of it as fast as possible. Uh, my son, sometimes when he's not paying attention, I can be like, Ian, Ian, or I can say, Ian, and he'll go, and I'm like, knock it off, bud. And dude, he's done. Yeah. I have to get his attention. Yeah. So I said, okay, all these, all these ADD, ADHD, AD, all this stuff. Yeah. Me, you, <laughs> all them. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get their attention and I'm going to tell them in, in, in a different story of like the prodigal son. Yeah. About how you are worth it. You are qualified for a good life. Everybody counting you out, but but I'm not. The fact that you've been through all that shit and they told you you were going to lose, that's all a lie. Yeah. And they try and they try to sell it to you. And even you believed it, but that's not the truth. And basically what I'm telling them in different language is this a story of the prodigal son. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like all of that's us, right. we come to God and we're like, if we could just be in the pig pen or if we could just get a job. And he's like, dude, first of all, kill the fatty calf, you know, get my best robe, get one of my rings. Everybody celebrate. We're throwing a party. My son's coming home. That's right. And you're like, that doesn't make sense, but I've been so bad. And he's like, dude, I've been waiting for you. It's just a decision. Just come home. Yeah, just come home. So my point is, is that I'm basically every day in stories telling the prodigal son story in as many versions as I can Mm. with a biblical heart, but telling stories that'll catch people's attention in the world right now. Yeah. I love that. Like you're worth it. Like you'll never out earn your own self-worth. You'll never out earn your own self image. Get in the gym. You got to see a different person. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't care what you do. Just do something different. Just, just do something different and then make a decision. Get away from those people. Hey, I almost went to jail. I was around the wrong people too. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I did a lot of bad things and broke the law. Hey, I, I wanted to, I had loyalty to bad people. I didn't know who to have loyalty to. I just was trying to practice it and I practiced it in the wrong place. Yeah. Like, dude, like I wouldn't be a good leader had I not been a bad leader and betrayed people and screwed them over. But once I did it all and I thought, oh my God, this is awful. Now I'm like, okay, now I'm qualified to be a good leader. And so many people are like, oh, you don't understand what that guy did. That guy, the person he is today, he wouldn't be that person. And he wouldn't be a person that could lead you into a battle had he not done that screwed up shit. Mm -hmm. If someone hadn't done all that bad stuff. That's right. They wouldn't be able to lead you in a a, a tough situation. They can't relate. Yeah, they can't relate. And so that's why, like, when I find a preacher that has gone through hell and back. Yeah. Like, dude, I want that guy by my side. So when he sees when I'm slipping, he's like, dude, I know what you're doing. I Mm -hmm. see you. Mm -hmm. It's time to change, man. Mm -hmm. We're done. You can take a left. You're going to regret this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take a right with me, son. Come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like he sees me. And I, and by the way, I trust you and I believe in you. So great leaders or, or great people that can, can help you change. Those are people that have went into hell, either whether intentionally or it happened on, on, and they've made it out. And now they're like, dude. I got a second chance and now you're trying to help people. Yeah. 
And you, you know, another thing that's, that's really interesting is, you know, I think um, there, there's a lot of like Christians out there, Christian like business owners who, uh, you know, think about like success, like how, how, how hard am I allowed to press into this, mm. right? Like how, mu- how much is too much? Like, am I bent on success? And there's like this, there's this kind of like internal struggle, you know, but, you know, work was ordained by God. And, you know, you think about like all of the things that you're able to do and mm-hmm. able to give back because of the success. So what would you, what would you say to, you know, Christian, Christian business owners who are struggling with, um, you know, how hard to like lean into their success? Like how hard should I go after this? Well, number one, I mean, if you have more to give and, you know, God made you with more to, to give, you know, like, like give it, yeah. like go harder. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm going to say something. We are in the era right now of the worst leader in the history of time. Um, absolutely, absolutely. I think we're in a leader where leaders are absent. We're yeah. in an era where leaders yeah. are absent. Um, families are starving for leaders. Okay. Um, businesses are starving for leaders. The world's starving for leaders. Um, it's like, dude, like if you can do something more, like, dude, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. Like, it's only bad if you had like, like ill intention yeah. in your heart or, to, you know, it says, you know, to, to, to fill up your storehouse, right? right? Like if your goal is to make all this money so that you could just go stack it away yeah. and just be rich and not help anyone. Dude, I know this. There's a lot of people right now that need a lot of help and that help requires money. Yeah. Okay. I could go serve unbelievably at the soup house, um, but that can't go build schools. Yeah. Okay. Like it can't go help someone who is in foreclosure with their home. Some, some of us, if you are built for a business, number one, you help your employees that work for you. Number one, number two, you hopefully bring a good service to your, your, uh, you know, your economy or to your community. Mm -hmm. Um, and then lastly, like dude, churches, and places and resources that that need help. You talked about like you do a lot of traveling over overseas mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people they absolutely need funds to make those things oh, happen. And what you can do with five or ten thousand dollars in like a second tier country, yeah, like you could change a whole community. One of the ministries I'm in, uh, Missionary Ventures International. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. We, we find we find like. Christian schools in third world countries. We find like missionary, money, though, right? yeah, we build like help build churches and stuff like that. But yeah, you're, it takes money to be able to do that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and so at the end of the day, um, humble, if you look up humble mm-hmm. and it, it, it says to think less of oneself. Mm. Okay. So I want you to be humble under God, but as man on this planet, I love my neighbor. I love everybody around me, but let's show people, I mean, I don't know where everybody lives when they're watching this, but if you live in the United States of America, yeah, there is so much opportunity here. Yeah. And if you leaned in and worked hard, number one, you're good examples to the people who look up to you, to your children, your wife, your kids, yourself, but you can make an impact and a difference in a place mm-hmm. where you can make big impact and a difference. There's not a shortage of any money in the United States. I mean, they're printing shit left and right. <laughs> and by the way, if you want to help people in other countries, then you have to work extra hard here to help those people in other countries right. that are less fortunate. So I would say like any business owner watching this, if they're like, well, you know, um, how, you know, when is enough enough? Well, yeah. how many people do you want to help? How big is your dream? That's right. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, if you're thinking small and it's just about you and you have your house and you have your cars and you have a bank account and you go on vacations, mm-hmm. if you're not thinking about anybody else, maybe it's enough. Mm. But if your dream is bigger, which I think it's maybe a good time for you to reevaluate yeah. what, I mean, look, once you get to a mountaintop, there always has to be another one. That's right. And, and if there's not, you're going to lose that drive that got you to where you're at now. And eventually yeah. you'll end up losing that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause nothing stays the same. It either goes down or it goes up. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? But I would just say like, man, we're, I mean, especially us, we're in the States. Um, you know, I love helping people cash in a check when I was young was the most exciting thing in the world like cashing a big check, yeah. fired my endorphins like no other. Now, helping someone 100%. fires my endorphins 100%. like no other. Yeah. Uh, I, I, t- I tell you this, I, I try to get in great shape. My wife's proud of me. I take good care of my son, my daughters. My wife's proud of me. I brush her teeth before, you know, they go to bed, you know, give them a shower. She's proud of me. I, I treat my team great. She's proud of me. But when me or one of my kids do something that has to do with someone else that we don't know and we do something for them 
her proudness goes from here to here. There was a time, and my daughter was probably three years old. We're in Mexico. We're at her beach house, and my daughter had her favorite doll. She carried it for one year. Okay. Everywhere she goes. And we were in this uh, OXO gas station in Mexico, and we're walking out, and there's this homeless lady, okay, and she's sitting there with her daughter, who is my daughter's age. And as we're walking out, this little girl locks eyes with my daughter, right? And I'm like, come on, come on, Sophia, come on, Sophia. And me and my wife together, I'm holding one hand, she's holding the other, and she's holding her little doll, too. And she stops, and I said, Sophia, come on, baby. And she stops, and she goes over and hands this little girl her baby doll. Dude, at that time, I realized that, man, like, I just want to be just like her. Yeah. Like, just like my little three-year-old. Yeah. And so we started practicing, like, just doing this giving. If we could just create that, listen, be good business owners. Yeah. Okay? Take good care of people. Yeah. Show people love. Be selfless. Yeah. Okay? Envy no one. Okay? Kill selfishness. Wear our hearts on our sleeve love people, show what's possible. Mm -hmm. God, if God is real, do we have a big God or a small God? A big God. Okay. So come on, man. If we got a big God, <laughs> go do some big stuff. That's right. You know, make some big moves, make bold moves. So like my daughter giving that away to her, she didn't think about money at three years old. That was her toy. Yeah. And dude, when it was done, we, me and her mom were like, hey, we'll go buy you another one right away. We're immediately trying to replace it. She's yeah. like, I'm good. You know, she's like, you know, I, I wanted to give it to her. And we kept asking her, why do you want to give it to her? Well, God is in her heart. And she said, hey, she needs us more than you do. Yeah. So I think as business owners, as we get older, I think we need to quit thinking like, is this enough for me? And think, has everybody else got enough? That's it. Yeah. So it's like, let's go back to the drawing table. Let's remember we have a big God. Let's make get big goals. Let's make big dreams. Yeah. And dude, like next thing you know, man, it's like. You may never know all the people that you helped, right? Oh, I'm sure we won't. You'll yeah. find out when we get there. Exactly. But that that's what you got to know is that like every time that you do something, like that little girl that was three that got that doll, we didn't stick around to see how she felt. Mm. I'm going to tell you, her mother probably learned a bigger lesson than the little girl. Yeah. But as the little girl grew up, she's probably 20 years old and she's different because she was given a doll at three. Yeah. It's like, dude, I think people have been programmed by so many just crappy people that mm. our job and anybody's jobs watching this is to go out now and to create great acts yeah. and to reprogram everybody else yep. with one good act of goodness in that just one good act will offset a, a hundred crappy acts mm -hmm. or even a thousand, you know, buying someone a drink. I mean, sh giving someone a smile, hey, dude, smiles are free and mm -hmm. you can give them out to everybody. We give out hugs and smile to everybody we meet. And everybody's like, dude, I love your team. Mm -hmm. We don't give them anything. We mm -hmm. just give them a smile and a hug and they love us. Yeah. And I think that's the love part. Mm -hmm. And I think love cures everything. So, mm -hmm. but, but I really would tell you, we got a big God. I think if you have the potential and you have the earning opportunity um, to create a good product and a good service for the community and you have a chance to go bigger, well, do it. We got a big God. Let's, let's show everybody it. how big he is. Heck yeah. You know, and just make sure when you receive that, you know, you give back. I mean, it says give 10%. That means you get to keep 90% or do whatever you want. I mean, that's just stupid. That's not even fair. It's just a starting point. Yeah, it's not even fair. And by the way, I'll say one more thing on the tithing part. For anybody that doesn't believe, I would tell you, go find yourself a good church. Go in there. You don't even have to do anything. Just grab a cup of coffee, sit down. Usually he knows you're there and he'll handle the message. You know what I'm saying? But number two, uh, the tithing part, mm -hmm. I learned that tithing was the most dangerous thing in the world. Mm. And truly until I really got into it, honestly, I never saved any money in my life. It's crazy. Once I gave it all away, we actually started to make it. And then we started <laughs> to give more away. Yeah. And then I realized that like, dude, like, why does it take, why are we so stupid? Mm-hmm. It's just because we're so small in mind compared to what he is yeah. that we just can't even, we're just scared. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I think like when we do these podcasts and we talk about like, you know, your, your brand, you know, who you stand for, move bees, um, it's to help business owners. You were, you had a, a moving company, mm -hmm. the reason, or and you still have one, but the yeah, reason why, yeah, you got three, but the reason <laughs> why it didn't grow as fast as you should is because 
your 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 call center was or my bad you didn't have a call center so you created one right because you learned that you know the moving and all these this stuff happens these people are reaching in all day long and people get tired of answering the phones mm -hmm. people get tired of being fired up on every phone call people get tired of giving great customer service 24 7 365 yep. people get tired of calling people back yep okay so what did you, what do we do? Well, you created a center that was disconnected from the company. That yep, the center separate place exactly like location the culture, is not at the, any the culture of the in the operation side and the culture in the sell side are two complete different cultures. Yep, the but, two don't get along. But the facts that you <laughs> figured that out, yeah, and separated them, boom, you blew up to the roof. That's right. So any other company, the only way that they would be able to create this would be to create number one a great call center, mm -hmm. a manager. Yep. A different building, yep. a lot of expenses, and you don't have to do all that. You can do it with somebody who already has a proven you system. You just literally plug into us. Yeah, it's plug in and you do plug it. Plug and so, play. So, yep. so, but, you, but that's what you did is that you found something that was good for the community, mm -hmm. okay? You make a lot more money. You give away. You travel. You, sure. you go and you're at, you're at uh, I would say, ministry events all the time. You're on missions all the time. You and your family, you're in all kinds of uh, conventions. You're plugged into all kind of leadership training. Mm -hmm. But you built this stuff and thought bigger. We have a big God, so you're playing bigger. But also you help your community. You help people. 100%. You solve problems. They make more money. Mm -hmm. It's like, so again, I would say all the business owners watching this is that like, dude, does your product help people? Yeah. Does it help people make more money? Yep. What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. It's like at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we need to raise our standards, I think. And if we don't, there's so many people, um, especially like in the States, I hear that talk about these limiting beliefs, that's impossible, yeah. that stuff yep. doesn't work for people yep. like us. Yep. Dude, I think we need more leaders stepping out there and showing what's possible right now. I think it's a time right now where we've, that's you good. know, and, and I mean, especially our age, we're doing our, our part, but I think a lot of people our age, this isn't to be disrespectful, but are 40s and 50s or 30s or 60s, Slowing they're down. not doing their part. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, like these kids growing up, they're, they want to work hard. They need someone to look up to. Yeah. They need someone to tell them what's possible. If we keep telling them they're entitled young prima donna kids, hey, listen, the truth is they grew up on iPhones. Yeah. They did have it easier than us. Yeah. We had it easier than our parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they didn't do anything wrong. This is just a generation they grew up in. We can still show them by us being the example. The problem is, is that a lot of guys our age aren't the example anymore. Yeah. That's right. And then we're ragging on them, telling them that they're not the example. Well, who are we? Mm hmm. So that's why I'm like, dude, I don't know about anybody else, but I know that I want to be a great leader for my house, my family, and then also my goal is to create more leaders. So just like you did in your company leveling up, the same question that you asked me, I mean, I, I, you answer the same one by you solving a lot of problems for other people. That allows you to elevate up, mm -hmm. and that allows you to do more for people in the church. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 100%. But as we're talking to him today, guys, I want you to think, like, at what, at what piece do you take away from this? Number one, if you're a moving company, you know exactly what you need to do. You need to make sure you text that number, the 330-752-8999. Make sure you connect with him. You guys are going to kick some butt, make some money, have some fun. And it's good to be around great people. But secondly, um, you're, you're on Facebook, right? I am. Yeah. yeah. So what is it on Facebook? How do they find you? Tim Krupp. K-R-U-P-P. K-R-U-P-P. -P. And he's out of Ohio, right? Yes. Yep. And um, you guys can go find him on Facebook if you want to follow some of his content. You know, this is something that he's been working hard in the dark. And he's like, dude, this is a time where I want to really build my personal brand. Um, just because right now I think that the news is dying. Nobody's watching the news anymore. Okay. Everybody goes to social media. And you're either watching TikTok cat videos or you watch someone that's giving you some real value. Yep. So if you guys want to learn about some real value, make sure you go and watch Tim Krupp. And that's K-R-U-P-P. -P, that's on Facebook. I'm going to make sure that he gets on Instagram and some other channels. Now, he has it made, but we're going to really get to start using it. And he's amazing. He's a great leader. He's a great dude. And if you're like him and you have a great business, it's time to come out. Yeah. People, people need more leaders. That's what I was just telling him. I said, man, you know, if you would have started this two years ago and you would have already been out here, you would have been as big as I am. Yeah. He'd have been out there on social media, but he's been building his business. He was spending time with his family. We all go through these cycles. I was talking about cycles and patterns. We go through these cycles where That's when you're huge. in the car business, you didn't get to see your family a lot. Right. 
Right. So you're like, dude, I need to spend some time with my family. Mm -hmm. Good. You do that, and then you're like, okay, wait a minute. It's time to go back to war. Plus, your wife likes seeing this side of you. She does. I know she does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she wants, she, listen, she wants to be number one. Mm -hmm. It's not like she wants to see this side of you because she's number two now, and that's number one. But if she, if you can maintain keeping her number one and she gets to see this killer inside of you. That's right. She loves it, man. That's why she married you 20 years ago, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, one last thing you want to say. Anything you want to say to the audience, anybody watching? Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This has been, uh, man, just an awesome podcast, better than I even thought that it was going to go today. So, yeah, just thank you, Andy. Thank you. If you listen to this, uh, please reach reach out to me. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Shoot me a, a, a DM on Messenger. Um, I'd love to connect with you. If you own a moving company uh, and you're struggling or anything like that right now, like you're, just you're not making scale, money, right? yeah, or you just want to scale, reach out to me. Um, I'm always giving my time to, to people in our industry. And, and so. you mentor a lot of people, right? I do. I, me- I mentor and do consulting for a lot of, a lot of moving company owners. Yeah, so they yes. can text, even if it's not about the call center, we can just talk about how to grow their businesses. That's right. And a lot of times we end up having discussions about uh, God stuff. and personal stuff. And like, really, like that's where the breakthrough needs to happen before well, they can scale. So. Well, well, see, that's what I love. And by the way, it's cool when you meet people that are actually real people, right? Because that last sentence that you just said, well, actually, we could end up talking about God and all kinds. That just means that you care. And there's a certain point to where you get to where you're like, okay, dude, this isn't about money. I'm not trying to get out of this job and go to this job. Actually, now it's all about fulfillment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's about, you know, you've built a good business. Now you want to help other people build a good business, you know, and I think that that's the side that for the next 20 years of your life, 30 years, you're going to be thriving in that coaching and building space. Mm -hmm. So you guys remember that we'll shoot a bunch more of these, you know, in the future. You know what I'm saying? I'd like that. We'll keep rolling. I'll be back out. Yeah, for sure. I love it, man. Yeah, I love you, bro. Thanks, Angie. But guys, check it out. Make sure you follow him on Facebook, Tim Krupp, K-R-U-P-P. Make sure you text that number, 330-752-8999. We'll catch you guys next time. Love you. See ya. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.